because we do have service tonight so I'm going to try to keep this short. Is that okay? So I'm going to read for your hearing Colossians the third chapter. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I think I might start at the 12th verse when it says put on therefore as the elect meaning chosen of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity. Charity, brotherly love, God's love in action. Amen. Which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Amen. To the which also ye are called in one body. Amen. And be ye thankful. Oh, yes. Did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. I think I might talk about that just a little bit. Oh, yes. Heavenly Father God, we come to you once again in the name of Jesus, thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. Lord, we know that these are not our people. They don't belong to us. Nothing we can give them or do for them that can help them unless you give it to us. Now, Lord, I ask that in these few moments that you would give us something that will help and bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. So today, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk a little bit on forgiving. Oh, yes. All right. Amen? Amen? Because so many times, we can call ourselves Christians. That's right. We can call ourselves saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. But yet, we hold what we call a grudge. Amen. Oh my God, ain't that crazy? It makes no sense to be a grudge holder. Y'all hear me? There's people that will sit at their house. They will sit in church looking at you, right in your face, holding a grudge. Not caring one thing about you. Not liking you, not wanting anything to do with you. Having a problem with you. Come on, somebody. Oh, Lord, help me. And that's a problem. And it is, Minister Cameron, a shame. Because that is not of God. Oh, my God. How can we say that we're saved and hold a grudge? See, I'm one that's going to tell you the truth. And people don't like a preacher that's going to tell you the truth. I'm a preacher that will bust another preacher out. A matter of fact, I saw a preacher on last night with another woman that wasn't his wife. Lord, help me today. And they're going to look at this on Facebook when the uh, message get on there and they're going to say, I know he saw me. Lord, y'all don't hear me. Because something is wrong with that. It's a doggone shame to see somebody with somebody who's not their wife. I praise my God. Can't nobody say, I saw him with somebody that wasn't his wife. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those accusations cannot be brought my way. But glory to the Lamb of God. Let me go back to forgiveness. But what we have to do is forgive. The Bible says, and we even quoted that scripture in the dedicating of these children. Hallelujah, that we forgive them their trespasses or debts. As, come on somebody, they forgive us. That's right. Forgive us as we forgive them rather. Because if we do not forgive others, their trespasses. The Bible declares that God cannot forgive us. So it's safe for me to say that if you're walking around 
holding a grudge against somebody, that all you are doing is wasting your time shouting and dancing and That's hollering right. and talking about Jesus. That's right. Because Jesus don't even hear your prayers. I don't hear nobody. So what you have to do is get rid of the hatred. That's right. Lord, help me, because I want you to understand that holding a grudge, that's a spirit of hatred. Y'all ain't liking me today. But that's hatred. We call ourselves Christian, and we're walking around with hatred in our hearts. So Shandell, I done told him how we know we done forgave somebody or how we know that we haven't. When we see them, the thing that they did or the problem that they had, we don't think about that when we see them. Y'all don't hear me. When we see them, that thing that turns in your stomach. Come on, somebody. It's not there anymore. It, it, it doesn't stop turning. Oh, But we got the prayer wheels turning. Come on, somebody. Even when that son done acted a pure idiot, I don't hear nobody. Oh, my. We can talk about it, too. But even when that mom and daddy done acted a nut. Uh -oh. We turn around and we don't feel that mess no more. But when we look at them, we see love. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yes. God is good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we see love. We see God. Sister Nisi. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is a good God. Oh, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. But we have to forgive. That's right, Pastor. And that's right, Sister Nisi. I don't miss anything. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But what we're doing, when we're walking around with unforgiveness in our hearts, Lord. when we're walking around, come on, somebody, with a grudge, Amen. it's like we have a good master plan that has a glitch in it. Wow. You don't hear me. Yes, yes. That's right. It's like a brand new computer that's called a virus. It's like legs that can't walk. That's right. It's like having eyes, but you can't see. It's like having a tongue. And not being able to talk. I don't hear nobody. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. So what we must do is get rid of the glitches. Yes. Get rid of the virus. Yes. So that God can do what God wants to do. Yes. Because when we have these things in our lives, God is not in total control. Oh, yes. I don't hear nobody. We're not allowing him to have and take control. Oh, yes. oh Lord, we need you today. Yes. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes. And in some things, oh yes, I, this is a saying and I say it myself, but, but this thing just hit me real good and clear, so I might have to stop saying it after this. Lord, I'm not where I ought to be, but I'm better than I used to be. Oh, yes. <laughs> Y'all know that saying. Come on, somebody. We say, I'm not where I ought to be, but I'm better than I used to be. Well, if you know you're not where you ought to be, then something's wrong. If you know where you're supposed to be, and you're not there, what about you tell your children you be home at 6 o'clock? They know they're supposed to be home at 6 o'clock. And if they don't get home, where do they stand with us? Y'all hear what I'm saying? So if you know where you're supposed to be and you're not there, where do you think you stand with God? So it's time out for making excuses. For the Bible declares you are inexcusable. Oh my God, I don't hear nobody. So there's no more excuses that we can use because the word is right there. 
Yes, Y'all can't use that excuse up in here saying that Pastor Cameron ain't giving you the word because I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you women that's losing the behind, quit whoring around. You don't hear me. I'm telling you man that can't stop, you quit whoring around too. I don't hear nobody. I'm telling you to keep your legs closed, keep your pants up, keep your zippers up, act like you got some sense. I don't hear nobody. Respect yourself. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you that you ain't got no business cussing and doing this and going places that you have no business. I'm telling you the truth. Am I not preaching the truth to y'all? I'm telling you that a lying tongue we don't have as Christians. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you to get rid of the hatred, the lust, the malice, the envy, the strife. I'm telling you to quit talking behind one another's back. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching the truth. So there's nobody that can say that I'm sitting up here in Revival Center and not getting the truth. So therefore, you are inexcusable. Stop making excuses and get yourself on the right track. I don't hear nobody. It's time for us to get it right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you all that you're worthy of. Had somebody even called me this morning. And I'm so bothered by that. I'm tired of my name being used when I ain't told nobody to use my name. Help, help. Lord, help me. And somebody said, Pastor said to somebody, I heard him talking, that you are in the place that you are because you've been gambling. You've been doing this. You've been doing that. I ain't said nothing about nobody gambling. Y'all don't hear me. That's right. But they, even though we don't gamble, you better get it right. Because I'm a preach against it. Yes. I'm a preach against gamblers and midnight ramblers. <laughs> y'all better act like y'all got some sense. But yet, I ain't said nothing like that. So what we got to do is quit stirring up mess. That's it. Stop being messy. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up. Grow up. That's right, Pastor. Stop stirring up mess. Quit saying stuff that you know is going to hurt somebody's feelings. Quit saying stuff that you know is going to make somebody angry or mad. My Lord. Quit running your mouth. That's right, Pastor. Everybody needs to be here today. <laughs> see, see that their tongue is a messed up thing. I'm telling you. The, uh, the Bible talk about it, 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 it not being able to be tamed. Come on, somebody. It, it talk like it, it's a little man in a forest. I don't hear nobody. A uh, 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 one that's behind the wheel of a ship. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Amen. But we have. The thought pattern of failures at times. We sit up and say that we can't do it. That's right. But Sister Carmen, yes. can't is not in God's vocabulary. Because the Bible declares, I can do all things through Christ. That what? Hallelujah. Yes, I can. Oh yes. oh, yes. And he gives us the strength to forgive. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Why do we walk around holding stuff in our heart? Oh, yes. oh, it feels good to that flesh. It feels good to hold a grudge. It feels good that if somebody hits you, to hit them back. I know it do, y'all. Don't mess with me. Please don't hit me. <laughs> Please don't hit me. But it feels good that if somebody do something to you, to do it back. And then I've been teaching us this, that maturity is when somebody does something to you and treats you bad, dogs you out, has a problem with you. Maturity is trying to understand why they're thinking the way they are. Other than trying to get back at them. Y'all hear that? Yes. That's what maturity is. But see, then we get selfish. We might turn around and you said that's what maturity is and why you ain't doing this with me. Shut up. Something is wrong with us. 
Oh Something is wrong with us. Because we're always looking for something that's going to benefit us. That's right. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through. We don't want to deal with nothing. We don't want to go through anything. And something's wrong with that. I tell you, I'm always talking about where I come from. Because some of y'all have forgot where you came from. I'm going to remind you. I will remind you. Some of y'all were, were some stank holes. Some of you were some drunks. Some of you were some liars. Some of you were cheating on folk. Some of you were doing a little bit of everything. Thank you for deliverance. But you better recognize that you have been delivered. Because if you forget where you come from, you'll find yourself right back in that same spot. You ought to look down on these young women and this and that and not be able to help them forgetting that you messed with your husband before you married him too. Y'all ain't gonna listen to this, is you? Y'all don't like it. I, I don't care whether you like it or not because I got to deliver me. I'm sorry. I can't sit up and think about what y'all think about me. But I got to think about what God thinks. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm not gonna hold back. I'm not talking about no new cars today because I want a new car. Come on, somebody. But, but, uh, but I know I ain't gonna get nothing unless I'm right with God. Lord, help me today. Somebody say forgive. forgive. We got to get there. We got to get there. We got to get there. And, 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 and when you forgive, forgiving will shut your mouth. That's it. Right. That's right. That's it. That's it. You won't talk about it. No. Don't sit up and say, I forgive it. And then you go back to running your mouth. That's it. They don't like teaching, do they? They don't like this teaching, do they? They don't like it. It's right anyhow. But I forgive you. But next thing you know, you're eating dinner. Right. What about this and that? Did you hear what she said and this and that? I, I told you, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of them acting like that. They just a hot mess. Hmm? Can't even wait till they get out of church. Good, done shout. Get in the car. But did you hear what the pastor said? Y'all don't hear me. Hallelujah. Done shouted all over the place, ran and hollering, acting like Brother Justin. Uh oh, Brother Justin told us that we got to give him a shout out today because he couldn't make it. One, two, three, ha! <laughs> Woo, there we go. That was it. He gonna see it. Hallelujah. But glory to the Lamb of God. We turn around and we forget where we come from. And forgiveness will make you shut your mouth. Yes, yes, Stop going home and talking about things. Stop allowing things to be on your mind because you're forgetting that everything you have is yours. Oh, yes. God gave it to you. Y'all yes. remember that teaching? Can we go back to that for a minute? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. this is my mind. My mind. God gave it to me. Gave I'll, think me. Think. I'll think what I want to think. I'll think what I want to think. See, you don't have to sit up and think on this and think on that. You've got control of your own mind. That's right. But we sit up and talk about it, I just can't help it. That's why the Bible says that we have to deny ourselves on a daily basis. Yes. They ain't liking no teaching today, is it? Got to deny yourself on a daily basis. You gotta forget about yourself. That's right. You gotta forget about you. Yeah. Because no flesh is gonna glory in the sight of God. Right. No flesh is gonna enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's yeah. right. I don't hear nobody. That's right. Yeah. But walking around with a grudge, I told you, it's like a good plan, a master plan that has one small glitch. And we got to get rid of it. Because the plan has to be worked out. It has to be fulfilled. And God is trying to fulfill his plan in our life. Now when we look at the word grudge. It means. Hallelujah. To hold spite. Animosity. Come on, somebody. You're right, you're right. Then it goes on to say hatred. And some of us talk about we love everybody. 
but holding a grudge, the truth is you have hate in your heart. That's right. That's right. And I hate to tell you the truth, but you're on your way to hell. That's right. According to the Bible. That's right. See, that's why people don't want to come to church. Because of people with stink attitudes like y'all. Y'all right. ain't going to like me today. Everybody talk, talking about they saved, they talking about they this, they talking about that, but you talking about everybody and they mama. But the sinners out there not wanting to go to church because they say, if they talking about people like that, what they going to say about me? If they in the same club that I'm in, why should I go to the church? If they cussing and smoking and drinking and lying, then what do I need to be there for? So we need to learn how to hold up the bloodstained banner. Oh, devil, I rebuke you today in the name of Jesus because I feel some adversity in here. Come on, somebody clap your hands and call on the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devil right now. Because God is real. Yes, he is. And his word is real. Yes. But I want to give you what God told me to give you. The Lord told me to tell you to put forth an effort to forgive. That is. All right. That's it, brother. Y'all don't hear me. Preach it, preach it. We put forth an effort in anything that we really want. That's right, Pastor. You're right. You're right. We put forth an effort in most things that we need. That's right. That's right. But when it comes to the spiritual battles, uh -huh. we don't put forth too much effort. Because we don't see it with our natural eye. That's we right. think we got time. That's right. right. Because we don't see anything hitting us, we don't, oh, y'all don't hear me. Go ahead. Go ahead. But we have to put forth an effort in order to forgive. Yes. Somebody say, why is that, Pastor? Why is that, Pastor? Because your very life depends on it. Right. Uh -huh. Because if you don't forgive somebody else, then God is not going to forgive you. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I want to tell you this, don't stop. Oh my God, look at your neighbor and you tell them because I can't tell all of you everything. Look at your neighbor and say, don't stop. No, Till you get it. Hallelujah. Put forth that effort. Yes, Press toward the mark. Yes. Because there's going to be adversity. Yes, yes. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. People are going to hurt you. Yes. They're going to make you real mad. I don't hear nobody. Sometimes you're going to have to cry. My mama said, I don't know why I have to cry sometimes. But there's going to be a perfect day. I don't hear nobody. When trouble and sorrow is going to be out of my way. I don't know right now, but I'm going to find out by and by. Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a hand of praise. Yes, yes, yes. But we can't stop until we get there. And we have to forgive. Ooh, hallelujah. Help us, Lord. And yes, I understand scripture. But let me explain this to you. It says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Yes, yes. Now we, as these good sanctified folks, we took that and we took it all the way to the extreme. We said, don't let the sun go down. Before it get dark outside, we said, Lord, forgive me. Yes. Listen, I want to make sure I'm right with you. And see, I think that's the right way. Yes. And the reason being because you don't know when the sun's going to go down. That's it. You, don't know. you don't know when God is going to call your name. Yes. See, we don't need to live every day like it's our last, but we need to live every minute like it's our last. Yes. Yes. I don't hear nobody. Yes. Every second. Like it's our last. Yes, Somebody shout, yes Lord. yes, Lord. Why are you walking around with an attitude? Yes. Why are you walking around with a grudge? Yes, Lord. The sun might decide to go down. Yes, I don't hear nobody. Yes, you could be on your way to work and something run into you and your sun go down. Yes, Lord. You could go to sleep and your heart stop beating. The sun done went down. Yes, I don't hear nobody. So make sure that you got it right. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm preaching the truth to y'all. I'm going to preach the truth. We got to make sure we're right. But see, we try to hold on to things. We try to hold on not only to grudges, but hold on to stuff that makes us feel good. 
and not realizing the things that we hold on to, things might be lawful but not expedient. I don't hear nobody. It might be right that you done did something wrong to me. Come on, somebody. And, and, and you have a right to be judged, but it might not be for me to do it. That's right. That's right. Lord, help me today. But we hold on to things that make us feel good. Yes, Lord. We hold on to things like our tithe money. Oh, God, I don't care what you say. I'm going to tell you the truth. We go out here and get our tax money. Come on, somebody. You know when we got our taxes. Because when we got our taxes, everybody got a new uh, plate in the back of their car. I don't hear nobody. People got new shoes. The kids are dressed different. I don't hear nobody. But you're building up your own houses and letting the house of the Lord lie in waste. You, you want to do something for this and that, but ain't doing nothing for God. I think something's wrong with you. Yes, yes. I got to preach the truth. Preach it. And people don't like the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Because nobody likes to be told that they're wrong. I done worked on my hair all day long, Sister Nisi. Cut it up, lined it up. I ain't lined it to this nigga. But then I got and did all that, somebody come up to you and say, Oh, that's jacked up. I don't like that. You should have did what you did last week. That's not cool. <laughs> How you gonna feel with that? How you gonna feel? You done sit down for hours and got that rope put in your head. <laughs> Didn't you hear that? This is expensive here. Don't do my hair. <laughs> Can I take that for a year? What I'm saying? They don't like it. They don't like it when you mess with that stuff. The horses don't like when you cut their tail all week. But they don't like it when you mess with that stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So people don't want to hear when they've done something wrong. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm trying to be com com comical at the same time, but I'm telling you the truth. That's right. That's right. They don't like when you tell them they're doing wrong. They don't like when you tell them that something's messed up about them. But we need to learn how to take constructive criticism. Because it's all going to work together for your good. If you just take it in, if somebody's telling you the truth, whether you like it or not, you better learn how to receive it. I don't hear nobody. And after you receive it, That we are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are going to be the 
some things go. Because if we don't let it go, God is not going to let our trespasses go. Because every man, woman, boy, and girl has sinned against God. For we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So I want you to understand that if you want God to forgive you, you got to forgive somebody else. And forgiveness is letting it go. See, what he does, he has the ability, the Bible says, to throw our sins into a sea that he calls forgetfulness. To remember them no more. So we got to get to that point. But we so messed up. Listen to how we talk. Listen, listen, let me tell you how we talk. We say, oh, I forgive them. But you bet I won't forget. You see the attitude in that? You see the mess in that? Let me say it again since y'all ain't seen it. Because a lot of y'all say it. I'll forgive them. But I bet I won't forget it. Y'all get that? And then women, they do a little bit different. They neck go one way when they hand go. I bet I won't forget. I bet. Where is this Lizzie at? I bet I won't forget. So I want you to understand that you've got to learn how to forget stuff. Because if you always remembering it and keeping it before your face, you ain't forgave anything. And you're going to find yourself in a messed up position. David said, I keep the Lord always before my face. Therefore, he is at my right hand, and I shall not be moved. I think about what God has done for me. And when I think about what God has done for me, it makes me want to do things for others. Do y'all understand that? So look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Forgive.